Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday Gear Show. Today we're looking at how to break in climbing shoes using a variety of different methods. Sometimes, out of the box, shoes need a breaking in period before they feel ready to climb in. First of all, I want to make clear that this is not a 510 sponsored video. They did send us an extra pair of Neads because we'll be filming a review sometime soon. When talking about fit, climbing shoes are obviously different than your sneakers. Rock climbing shoes are meant to fit your foot tight so you can be really precise with your footwork. And often, the tighter the fit, the higher performance you want to achieve. We've done a ton of videos about shoe sizing, links down below. So if you've gone for that performance fit, the shoes are gonna be stiff and tight and you need the break-in period so they can soften up and mold to your foot, which can take a long time and it's usually a painful process. So the point of this experiment is to hack the break in time and speed up the process. To do so, we'll be using all the elements, fire, water, ice, wind. Okay, maybe not wind, but you get the point. So the Neads are an all around shoe and because of that synthetic unlight upper, they have a minimal stretch, unlike leather shoes. We've got two pairs here. They're all the same size and I've gone for that performance fit. Clearly, there's one shoe missing, but you'll find out shortly why. Like any science experiment, we have the control subject, which we're not gonna touch or use. And let's get going with the experiment and find out where the shoe is. It's actually in the freezer. For the first experiment, we're going to use the ice bag method. We filmed this the day before to give the water 24 hours to freeze. First up, open the shoes. Take a plastic bag and place it into the shoe. Fill the bag with water, leaving some air. Tie a knot in the bag. Place the shoe in the freezer overnight, so the water will freeze and therefore expand. The next day, remove the shoes from the freezer. Check that the water is frozen. You now need to remove the bag from the shoe, but first you might have to break the ice. Now it's time to put the shoe on. Strap it tightly and walk around with it. Move and stretch your feet to help the breaking in process. Right, method number two. Let's unleash the element of water. You can do this in the shower, but to make life easier, we opted to use a bucket. We filled the bucket enough to immerse the shoe in. Okay, it's time to get it wet. Put the shoe on and place it into the bucket for about five minutes. Walk around as before, move, dance, catwalk, then remove the shoes and stuff them with paper. Place them somewhere warm to let them dry out. Finally, we're going to heat up the shoe. In this case, using an oven, you need a heat source to warm up the shoe and soften it. Preheat the oven to about 120 degrees. Once the oven is warm, put them in for about three to five minutes. Make sure to keep an eye on the time and on the shoe. When ready, take them out. Make sure the shoes aren't so hot that they will burn your feet. For a final time, walk around, strut your stuff, and keep them on until they cool down. 
Then stuff them with newspaper to keep them stretched. So I've tried out these methods just once on each shoe. You can try them multiple times and do it over and over again till the shoe will actually mold and like fit your foot well. So I'll put on my right shoe, on my right foot, the control shoe, and let's see how the other ones are. Ugh. Right, so these are nice and tight, very tight. Um, I don't think I can keep them on my foot that much longer, but let's see how the eye stop shoe feels like on my left foot. Ooh, easy, easier to put on. It's nice and soft, actually. It feels, it feels pretty good, obviously, compared to the control shoe. I thought this method wasn't gonna work at all. Instead, it did expand a little bit, and uh, yeah, it feels nice and soft. It's clearly not the quickest method. I mean, it does take 24 hours to freeze in the freezer, but if you're looking to expand your shoe a little bit and make it, and make it softer, Try the ice method. Up next, the second shoe or hot water method. Okay, these two, they feel softer. Definitely easier to put on. Compared to the ice one, this definitely has molded more to my foot. Um, it feels, it doesn't feel like it has expanded, but it does feel like the shoe is more wrapped around my foot. It's definitely not the quickest method, but it certainly works. And I don't think I need to do it again. I think I'm satisfied with the fit of this shoe, how it is right now. All right, so the final one, I have to take off the control shoe because it's a right foot. Right, so the heat one that we popped in the oven for five minutes. Hmm. Ow. Okay, this, oh, it didn't do much. It was quite nice once uh, I took it out of the oven and put it on my foot while it was still warm. Like it really did soften off, soften up, and it was comfortable then. And even when it got colder, it felt good. But now I gotta say, it does feel really tight. Not as much as the control shoe, but it didn't really expand or mold to my foot that much. However, this method is quite quick, so I would try it a couple of times before really writing it off. In conclusion, all of these methods work, some better than other. Definitely my favorite one and the one I'm gonna use again on some other shoes is the bucket or hot water or shower method. So if you fancy taking a shower with your climbing shoes on, do. So if you want to pick up the 510 Neads, you can find them on the Epic TV store and you know how to break them in now. Right, I'll see you next time.